last thing I want to go over is lab testing. Okay. So in labs, and I'm sure some of you have done this, we have this thing called a buffer. A buffer is a compound that's used in many experiments, especially in biology, in order to maintain the pH at a certain level. When you have a test tube and you have reactions going on in the test tube, biological or chemical, um, they may produce products that, have, that are acidic or basic. And those products would change the pH of the solution. However, in biology, and since we're trying to study biology, the closest way to do so in a test tube is to make sure that the pH doesn't change because our body also has natural buffers and in our body, the pH is very well controlled. It never really fluctuates. So if we had a test tube in which we were trying to test a biological reaction and as the reaction was going on, the pH changed suddenly, we wouldn't, it wouldn't really give us accurate results to the experiment because that doesn't happen in our body. The pH doesn't change. In order to do that, we use this thing called buffers. Buffers, their job is to resist changes in pH. They make sure, they make sure that the pH doesn't change of the solution. Some of the most common buffers that we actually use are weak acids and bases in biology, at least. This is because when the target pH of the experiment is near the pKa of the uh, uh, acid or base, it's not easy to change the pH. I can actually show you this visually using this titration curve. So remember that titration curve is what happens when you add in, when you have a solution and then you're slowly adding in strong base, right? We mentioned that the midpoint is equal to the pKa, right? Of a solution, right? So notice how at the midpoint, if you used a buffer, so we were at pH five at this pH and we had a uh, carboxylic acid, which let's say for example is here, is this one. And it has a pKa of five and a midpoint at pH equals five. If you add in a little bit more base, and go very slight, um, this picture, just look at the midpoint. Um, again, at pH five or pH, whatever this is. And then you moved, added in a little bit of strong base, you moved to the right, just a little bit. Well, what's the pH now? It's basically the same. What happens if you move uh, pH a little bit to the left? If you add in a little bit more acid, and you move the uh, graph a little bit to the left from the midpoint. Well, again, draw the line, pH unchanged. Fair, at this range, it's almost a horizontal, like, and you can see here very clearly, at this point, it's almost a horizontal line. So that means if you add in a little bit of base or a little bit of acid, the pH, the Y component won't change essentially. What that means is it's very resistant to changes. Whereas for example, if we use something here, if you change a little bit, add in a little bit base, you go over here, which is a little bit to the right. Well, the pH changed by like a whole value. Or if you go a little bit to the left and here, you change the pH by a lot, right? So at this area around the equivalence point, it's very bad um, as a buffer because small changes in acid base concentration lead to huge changes in pH. Small changes in pH in this region, the midpoint, or it's actually also called the buffer zone uh, for in biology. So it's called the midpoint, half equivalence point, or sometimes the buffer region. This buffer region if, is very good for, as the name would imply, buffers, because small changes in acid base concentration have essentially no change in pH concentration, and um, they are very helpful for maintaining um, a pH, a certain pH that you want. So for example, if you want to maintain your pH in the test tube at pH seven, the entire experiment, you'd find a, a weak acid or a weak base that has a pKa of seven, and you would use that as a buffer and it would prevent any changes from um, in pH away from pH seven, either to pH eight or to pH six in either direction. If you were using, if you wanted your reaction to be at pH 11, you would use a weak acid or weak base that had a pKa of 11. Again, does that make sense? Does everybody understand what a buffer is? 
or how we determine what is and what isn't a good buffer. So a good buffer would have a pKa um, equivalent to um, the, pH, the ideal pH that we want to keep the experiment at. Okay, next lab techniques I want to talk about are color change tests. One, we want to, if we want to measure the pH of a solution, um, one way we could do it is through, um, through a pH meter, but that's a little bit of more recent technology and may not always be convenient, may be sometimes difficult, may be somewhat inaccurate. Um, before this, we commonly used pH color change tests. One common way is to use a litmus test. A litmus test involves taking um, part of a special litmus paper. So it's li literally like a scrap of small paper um, in, and it puts it into the solution. And if the paper actually changes color, um, that means that indicates what pH it is at. So a litmus paper normally starts off as one color, say red, litmus, if you had red litmus paper. And then if you, um, or I have an example here, if you had a uh, blue litmus paper, if it comes into an acidic solution that has a pH below five, you, when it, the blue litmus paper comes in contact with the uh, solution, it will change color to red. So you dip the litmus paper in the, in the solution, if it changes to red, you know that the solution is acidic below pH five. If the pH of the solution is seven, you dip the paper in, you dip it out, it's still blue. That means you know it's above pH five. Very simple test, very easy. Um, a more complicated and I would say a more useful test from litmus paper is an indicator chemical, right? We also use these commonly. Um, so the paper, um, I believe usually it's blue. I believe the litmus paper is usually blue, but it can really be any color. And as long as it changes color, it's okay. But usually I think they're blue. Um, apart from litmus paper, other tests may include um, dropping an indicator chemical that similarly changes color based on pH into the solution. However, instead of a piece of paper, it's actually like a chemical, like a, almost like a food dye that you drop into your solution. Um, so for example, um, there's this indicator called bromothymol blue. If you drop bromothymol blue into a solution, if the pH of the solution is greater than seven, it will turn a deep blue. If the, if it's between, if the pH is between six and seven, then the, the bromothymol blue will turn green. If the pH is below six, the solution will turn yellow from the blue. From the bromothymol blue. Based on this, you would know if you dropped, say, uh, some of the chemical into any solution, you'd be able to tell if it was acidic, uh, basic, or neutral. What sometimes they may give you is an effective range for the indicator. Um, so, for example, the range for bromothymol blue is pH 5 to pH 7.5. This doesn't mean that it doesn't work on pHs higher or lower than that, and it actually will. What it means is that anything out of the range, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So for example, if you dropped it into a pH of five, it would turn, um, it would turn a deep yellow. If you dropped it into um, pH two, it would turn the exact same shade of yellow. Therefore, just using the indicator, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a solution of pH two and pH five. But between five and 7.5, it actually has various shades. So if you took pHs of five, 5.5, 6, 6.5, 7, 7.5, and dropped a bromothymol blue into each of them, all of them would be different shades. And you would be able to tell exactly which one is five, 5.5, 6, 6.5, 7, and 7.5, because they're within the indicated range. So because they'd be different shades, you'd be able to tell um, where it is on the pH spectrum. Um, again, anything pH five or below will, will be the same shade of yellow, regardless of what the pH is. And all pH greater than seven will be the same shade of blue. But pH 6.5 and 7.5 will have different shades of blue-green. So you'll be able to differentiate 6.5 from 7.5, right? And that's what effective range means. If the effective range they give you is two to four, that means anything below two or anything above four will all be the same shade. 
but between two and four, it'll be like a spectrum. And you'll be able to tell the color differences and you'll be able to tell what pH it exactly is.